Good morning. So three things that you can do today to help overcome slow weight loss is what we're going to be talking about today for the next three to five minutes. If you're just coming in, give me a hello. If you're on replay, uh, let me know. This is an early one today um, for a Sunday, I guess. So um, if you haven't yet downloaded or requested my free Christmas survival guide where we go over cravings, things to do to stay on track and still enjoy yourself, eating out guide, comment below with um, Christmas guide below and I'll send that over to you. If you've already requested it, um, you should be receiving that shortly or would have already. So, um, weight loss plateau. It's a really interesting one because, you know, especially when it's coming to January, um, it's coming up to January, and there'll be a lot of people thinking about what they're going to do in January. And I'm actually just finishing off a blog on um, vegan diets, actually, and things to be um, aware of. Not that I'm um, advocating you do it. I'm just saying if you decide to do it, these are the things that you really need to be aware of. Um, is it something I would actually recommend? Uh, you have to wait for the blog. But anyway, um, that's like EastEnders. So, weight loss plateau. This is a really interesting one because first off, before we go into that, and <laughs> I feel like I'm in journal club now, we've got to define what weight loss plateau is. You know, We've got to get definitions in because so often we're having these conversations without defining what we actually mean by a plateau. Because I know someone who might go, oh, I've only lost two pounds this week. And they'll say, oh, I need to, I need faster weight loss. And I'm thinking, mm. yes, but given what you're doing in your lifestyle right now, if you speed this up, you might not be enjoying it anymore. You might not find it easy anymore. And actually, if you consider that actually two pounds, you know, that's like a hundred pounds in a year, if you carry on the way you are and you're not even finding it that hard, you're actually enjoying it. Do you want to change it? And when we go through these questions, it's like, actually, yeah, if I lost £100 in a year and I'm on track to do that, then why am I even looking to change this? Why am I even looking to change this? So th this is something that we, we really need to, to consider in the questions that we're asking here. But when things stop moving, there are some things that you can do. You've first you've got to consider that physiological changes that you've made, like let's say you've lost some weight or body fat, or perhaps you're doing inches as well. And this is an important thing to remember that you may be getting results, but just not on the scales because muscle um, is more dense. So you might still weigh the same, but be smaller because a pound of muscle might look more like the fist and a pound of fat might look more like the hand, which means that you might be smaller, but weigh the same. And that's good, right? Like a lot of people say, I want to uh, fit clothes better, be healthier, be fitter, and, and muscle is a lot more metabolically um, healthier, if you like, in terms of how you handle blood sugar levels, your inflammation in the body, diabetes risk, cardiovascular disease risk, amongst other things out there right now. Um, so we know that's going to be a very healthy thing to do. But what we also know is if you've had made, made changes, you potentially become a smaller human being. And if you've lost some weight before or quite recently, by becoming a smaller human being, you actually burn fewer calories, right? So if you lose 10 pounds, you're now 10 pounds lighter, you're carrying 10 pounds less. So everything you do, you're doing in a lighter way, there's less weight on you. Obviously, that's great, because you've done so well to lose that. But at the same time, your needs might have changed. Okay, so I'm just going through these, first and foremost, just so you have a better understanding. There was one study, this case study, Every kilo they lost, they just added a, a bit of a weight to someone. And it helped, did help overcome plateaus. I'm not saying do that, like, oh, I've lost two pounds. Let me put two pounds in a backpack and walk around. But um, it is something to consider. So here's three things that you can do today to, to help with that. So number one, you may be moving less subconsciously. You know, maybe even especially around this, this time of year. So what I want you to do is just commit to a certain step count, squat count, workout per day, um, no matter how small, just so you have a bit of a baseline. Because when uh, weight loss happens or fat loss happens, there are perhaps subconscious changes that make us move less. Like you might, maybe you lose some weight in your body, you're like, oh, I'm just not gonna fidget as much anymore. This is called neat, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. These might be going on around that. You might be less likely to go for that walk. It's a bit cold and rainy, oh, I don't really wanna do it. Whereas actually before, maybe you were more likely to do it. Maybe when you talk, your hands go crazy, as mine do. When, um, 
when, but when you lose weight, maybe it, they just calm down and you're talking a bit more like this. There's these little changes that can go on, especially short term. And if you keep the weight off, they say 10 months or longer, um, these are actually where physiological changes can happen, hunger hormones change, and your body settles at this new setting point, which is great, by the way. So if you are in a plateau, but you've actually keeping the weight off, well, just know that 10 months on seems to be quite something there. So you're doing well, keep it up. Um, so just consider that we might need to, to move a bit more. We might need to compensate for this. Um, number two, we might be eating more than we think, social events, etc. So one thing you can do is literally just write it down. Write down before you eat something today. Just write it down. Before I eat something, I'll write it down. And you can take this one step further and ask the question of, am I, am I feeling satisfied right now? How am I feeling right now? Even before that you eat it. How am I feeling? Then give yourself permission to eat it. Now, how am I feeling again? Am I feeling satisfied? If no, what would have satisfied you instead? If no, what would have satisfied you instead? Because quite often we'll come up with something that would have satisfied us perhaps just as much or more so than the food that we've eaten, the snacks we eat, especially when it comes to that you know, um, snacking, comfort eating, which we know can be triggered by stress. Um, and this is why it's important to be aware of this in terms of am I eating just to try and feel better? Okay, that's great. Don't judge. That's where I am. I'm trying to feel better, which is fine. If you're not feeling better, aka, are you feeling satisfied afterwards? If no, okay, what else would satisfy you? And then you can start bringing a list in. Well, maybe it's having a bath, reading a book, doing a hobby, ringing friends, seeing friends, um, dancing around with your daughters, as mine is. A bit of karaoke on. Sweet care. Yeah, that was yesterday. Um, then up, yeah. So, I'm enjoying this time. Uh, so that, that's one there. So just to write down, just even for a day, just to go, yeah, you know what, have I just veered off track a little bit? Um, because quite often we, we then look at shiny objects for January, right? We're thinking, you know, I need to do all this, but actually we just veered a little bit off. And if we just come back to central a bit, do the basics well, well, guess what? Yeah, we're back to where we were. And this is number three. Are you doing the basics? Which is, are you drinking a glass of water before every meal? Two litres of water a day, say, or wean clear by noon, however you want to describe it. Three clear wees a day. Are you drinking enough water? Two, are you getting some protein with every meal? Are you getting at least one big serving of different veggies in a day? Because if you do those three things with your nutrition, you, you're going to be quite there or thereabouts in 90% of cases. Of course, like, we can go more, way more into it. But before we jump into these, you know, all, perhaps all or nothing approaches, which is why we're in this space now, potentially. Let's have a look. Are you actually doing the basics? So I hope that helps. Any questions, as always, do let me know. Comment below. Um, if you found that helpful, like, share it. Um, anything that you're going to apply today from this, anything that you need to go, yeah, actually, I need to go back to basics. Comment below. Let us know. If you want that Christmas survival guide where we go over cravings, hunger, and the eating out guide as well, um, just comment below with Christmas guide and I'll send that over to you. Have an awesome Sunday and I will see you soon. Take care.